Let's learn how we can use Claude code to do code reviews as well as improve the quality of our code. I have a simple project here that is an express app that exposes an API to do basic task management stuff. Now this is just a simple API. It doesn't have any front end. So the things that we're trying to look for are security vulnerabilities as well as certain performance hits that we might take. I have peppered the whole code base with comments saying that this is unwise to do the certain things that we're doing. For this particular one, you can tell there is no error handling here. We're just responding with a 500 regardless of what may have happened and we're just sending out a server error so clearly that's something that could be improved by Claude code there's no real reason to show you the full app because honestly Claude code should show us all of the issues within this entire code base so let's get started i'm going to open up my terminal and in the terminal i'm just going to start up Claude. so i'll say Claude and i'll hit enter now that we've started the cli tool let's get right into it i'm just going to ask it if it can find any issues within this code base so what i'm asking it to do here is to review this code base and identify code quality issues. So now I'll hit enter and see what it gives me. All right, so it looks like it's done. I expanded the window a bit so that we could see it better. And I'm gonna scroll up and see what it found. And I'm gonna read the highlights here just to give an idea of what it found. It found some inconsistent error handling saying there's different error formats using error, message, message. It's finding some security issues. JWT token contains excessive user data. That's not good. Uh, password handling uses synchronous methods. Also also not good. It's showing up weak email validation. It's saying no rate limiting. That's also not good because people could just keep sending requests to the API and overload the server. Uh, no input validation in many routes. That's also a problem. We want to be able to validate what the client is sending in. We don't want them to send in some erroneous issue that could take down our entire server. We've got some performance issues here. Task statistics calculate counts with loops instead of aggregation queries. That's an easy fix. No pagination for task listing, also an easy fix. Inefficient queries and in database operations. Um, again, we want this thing to be efficient. We want it to run well. These are some performance issues that we could easily take care of. Now we've got code style inconsistencies and we want the code base to be unified. We want it to look the same no matter what file you're going into. That allows for easier maintenance and just an easier time working with it. You can see that we're mixing var, let, and const, and that's specific to JavaScript. Inconsistent function declaration styles. That's saying either using the function notation or the arrow notation. Inconsistent error message format, similar to what we saw earlier. Uh, missing consistent documentation. We have no documentation throughout the entire app, so adding that would be a very big benefit. There's some database concerns, there's some missing features and maintainability issues. And it just gives me some poor missing documentation, hard-coded values, duplicated code and controllers, and no testing infrastructure. Okay, so now that we've seen what it knows about, let's go ahead and start fixing these. We want to implement certain fixes for say the first thing, which is security flaws. So I'm gonna ask it to resolve all security flaws inside the code base. And we're gonna see if it actually finds everything and also fixes everything. So I'll hit enter and let it run. Okay, so now we've ran into our first implementation block and it looks like it found the user schema, which is for Mongoose, this is using MongoDB. The user schema is the schema that it places inside of the collection that it creates on the database. You define all of your columns in here and it notices that there is some validation issues within this file. So let's see what it changes. If we scroll all the way up to the top of the file, it even changed the comment here instead of saying user schema with insufficient validation. It says it with improved validation. You can see we've added some attributes to some of these columns. The name column added the trim to make sure that there are no empty spaces adds a min and a max length, as well as the email, it has to match a certain regex. Otherwise the database will respond with, please provide a valid email address. Inside of the password, we're making sure that there's a minimum length and it also cannot be selected. Okay, cool. So it looks like we've added some validation and then down here, it looks like it updated the password hashing function. Originally, we were using this synchronous bcrypt.generate-salt-sync function as well as the hash sync function and they were running synchronously. What we want to do is we want to have it run asynchronously so that we don't interrupt any of the functions that are running in our server. So it's clearly made the change by making it an async function and running the bcrypt by saying await for this async function. They also added a compare password method down here to the user schema and this will be to compare the password with the password hash that's currently in the database. Now all of these changes actually look 
look pretty good. So I'm going to accept this file. Now it's giving me the task file and it looks like it's doing pretty much the same thing to this schema. It adds all of this validation and also adds an index so that we can easily look up things inside of this collection. And I'm just going to accept this as well. So now we've gotten to the middleware auth file and it looks like it's changing a lot of the functionality in here. We can see we're now correctly using the authorization header before we were using this custom X auth token header. That is a welcome improvement. We also have a little bit of error handling, making sure that that bear token exists. Otherwise it responds with a 401 and we're standardizing the response with message as opposed to what we had earlier, which is this MSG key. This looks good. We're splitting the header and we're getting that value for the token. And then from here on out, we're just checking that the token doesn't exist. This is the same code that was in there before. Uh, responding if there is a problem with authentication token is missing. And then we verify the token. Before we were just calling jwt.verify. And while this is fine, you can add some more information like what algorithms that particular secret is using as well as the max age of the token just to make sure that it isn't past that age. Then down here, we were setting the user to the entire decoded user. We don't need all of that information in the JWT token. We can just pull out the ID of the user and send that back to the user so that we don't actually ever deal with any of the other information inside of this JWT token. We also have some more error handling down here just using that standard message as well as a 401 saying when a token is expired or if it's an invalid token. All right, all of this fixes all of those security flaws that we had before. And so I'm going to accept it and move on. And next is the auth controller, but I won't bore you with all of the changes that this thing is making because the entire code base was just littered with issues. However, if you're doing this, you absolutely want to check every single line that Claude code is implementing because you want to make sure that everything is okay. Even though this one is just terribly written. Uh, we just still want to make sure that Claude code is doing correct things to our code. Okay, great. So now that all of the changes have been made, you can see on the left-hand side, nearly every single file was updated. I told you it was bad in here. We now get a report on what things it actually changed. We can see all the authentication changes. We get all the database changes, some input validation and sanitization changes. Uh, some API security changes and some general security changes. I noticed it added a lot of documentation to different files and functions inside of the project. Now I'm a bit curious about what the cost is right now with all of these different changes. So I'm typing forward slash cost to see what I get. Okay, it looks like it costs 80 cents to do all of that code review and make all of those changes. These code changes were pretty intensive. I mean, it changed 563 lines with 171 of them being removed. So clearly there was a lot done for just 80 cents. But I'm curious if it can find any other issues within the application. It did solve all of the security issues, but I'm wondering if it finds anything else with the code that it wrote inside of each one of the files. So I'm just asking it here, can you find and fix any other issues within the code base? This should give me a pretty good idea if it just starts hallucinating and making things up, or if it says, no, everything is fine. So I'm going to hit enter and see. Okay, it finally finished and it changed a lot of stuff. It not only changed things in files that we've already looked at, but it also started to add new files like the validate.js file over here and also a whole suite of tests for the authorization. We even got things that I didn't expect it to do. It added a prettier file, added an ESLint file, also added a jest config and it even added a readme that wasn't there before. So more of the story here is you need to be very specific when you're asking it to do something because clearly it will go off and start implementing things that you didn't even ask for, like tests. I didn't ask for any tests. I just asked to update any of the issues and fix them if there are any. But let's take a look to see what it did enhance or improve in the code base. Wow, this is a lot. It added a comprehensive security middleware, helmet, cores, rate limiting. It added all of that as well as implementing implemented input validation middleware with validator.js. That's the new one that we saw up here. Man, it really wanted my code to be a certain way because it improved code structure and organization. It created a standardized API responses, added consistent error handling. It really 
upped the maintainability of the code, which is nice. It's what I wanted. It even added, like I said before, those configuration improvements. It added an env.example file so that we can set this up on different servers. It doesn't have to be just my local server. It even updated the git ignore file to include all of the things that we would need to ignore in git, like the sensitive environment files. Like we saw, it added the testing frameworks as well as the code quality tools with ESLint and Prettier. And it even added comprehensive scripts in package.js. So if we go over to package.json, we used to just have a start script, but it looks like we've got not only a start script, but we've got a dev script, a lint script, a format, a test, security, just to beef up all of our maintainability for this code base. Man, those were a lot of improvements and for things that I didn't even ask for, but let's see what the cost was. Okay, so the cost for all of those improvements was about 73 cents and we can see it changed 1,453 lines so far, as well as removing 327. Now, I honestly don't think that there were 327 lines to begin with, so it removed some of the things that it had created in the first request that we had at the beginning. Okay, well, now that we've seen it in action, does the application actually run? Let's check it out. I'm gonna add a new terminal. And inside of this terminal, I have to run npm and i to install any of the packages that it added earlier. After that, we're gonna run npm run start, which was the script that I initially created and see if it starts up. Okay, it started up successfully. And let me just see if I ping it. Yeah, so this get request responded with a 401, meaning it wasn't authorized, and I get a response of it not being authenticated. What's nice is this logging was definitely not there before, and we get like a robust timestamp, which is cool. So Cloud Code was able to take this example and make it something good, which uh, honestly, coming from what I wrote initially, it needed a lot of help. So that was a great code review for what was needed, and it cost us $1.50. Now you could take that as a company and be like, that's not very much. Or you could take that in personal development and think, wow, that is very expensive to do all of that. But it really did a lot. So you can take that as it is. But anyways, that is how you can use Cloud Code to get recommendations, implementation ideas for certain vulnerability fixes or security flaws inside of your entire code base.